Hey everyone, it's Greg, and it's another edition of Unbreak All the Podcast. The Break Time Cover. And we are celebrating today because it is Thursday, October 12th. Cover. And we're celebrating the Phillies' victory last night. And yeah. Thanks for watching it. Thanks for listening. How about those Phillies last night, huh? I was a little worried. Huh? After such a brutal loss in game two, such a gut punch, losing that game the way we did. Me of little faith, right? Knew we were going to come home and take the win. Yesterday was the big game because have a little bit of a leeway to know, just in case, God forbid, the Phillies lose. They'll have game five back in Atlanta on Saturday. But we don't even want to go that far. We want to end it tonight. But let's talk about last night first before we talk about tonight. How about that, Grace Harper? Think back. The Phillies were planning on signing either Grace Harper of Manny Machado. How different things would have been if the Phillies would have signed Machado. And a lot of people were asking the Phillies to sign Machado. Better defensive player, just as good of a hitter. Just something about Machado. You know, I don't know what it was. Bryce Harper would seem to be the more the, the better leader. Uh Anyway, thank God that the Phillies decided to sign Harper, and he's been worth every penny. Grace Harper, when it's all said and done, is going to be on the Mount Rushmore of greatest Phillies of all time. Right now, you'd have to say definitely Steve Carlton to Mike Schoen. Or up there. Possibly Dick Allen, possibly Richie Ashburn, possibly uh, Jay Suffley, Jimmy Rollins, um, Ryan Howard, um, Cole Hamels. There's a lot of uh, possibilities after Carlton and Schmidt. But by the time the whole thing is over, could Bryce Harper be? the all-time best Philly. You got to look at it this way. He's going to get 500 million runs eventually. Uh, depends how many championships he leads the Phillies to. That's that's the that's the bottom line. How many championships? How many big moments? I've been lucky to be at three of Bruce Harper's big moments. I wasn't there last night, unfortunately. But I was there when Harper hit the walk-off grand slam against the Cubs a few years ago. I was there when Harper hit his 300th home run just this past season against the Angels. And uh, I was there when Bryce Harper hit the Bedlam at the Black Bank. Bedlam, bedlam, bedlam at the Bank home run against the Padres last year to get the Phillies into the World Series. Uh, the guy is clutch. And uh, you need a big hit. He always seems to come up. The thing is, when he doesn't come through, it's more unusual than what he does. Yes, he's a great, great player. And he's become a really good first baseman, too. Came back earlier than what he should have. Worked his tail off from that Tommy John surgery. And uh, what more can you say about him? He's a real team leader. Clutch guy. So, you know, the Phillies uh, got behind one nothing last night. Did panic. Did panic. See, so, you know, right up. Next study, Castellanos hits a run, ties it up. Just like that. Phillies go on to get six runs. In the third inning, isn't it odd? Last year against the Braves, game three, Phillies got six runs in the bottom of the third. Same situation. This series is almost deja vu 
to the Braves series uh, a year ago when the Phillies won the first game down in Atlanta, did the same thing this year, lost the second game, did so this year, won the third game, same thing, scored six runs in the third inning. Uh, and we know how last year ended. Phillies won game four, went on to the championship series against San Diego. Uh, tough game tonight, Spencer Strider. Uh, now, here's the Spencer Strider thing. You know about Spencer Strider, what he said about a week or so ago, that he actually prefers stadiums not to have fans like it used to be back in 2020 when you had cardboard fans in the stands. I mean, who says that? Come on. He likes it nice and quiet. And I said back then, I said, wait till this guy pitches in Philadelphia. He's going to get quiet. He's not going to know what noise is like in a stadium. And it's going to happen tonight. I can see as soon as he steps on that freaking man, uh, there's going to be noise and noise and noise. Imagine when he gets the three balls. Imagine when he uh, gives up a hit, the first hit. Noise upon noise upon noise. But you know what? Spencer Strider, he marked himself as a, as, as a, as a bark man by making such a stupid comment that he doesn't like fans in the stands. I mean, he could say that about his own fans too, right? Uh, he's a punk. He's a great pitcher. 20 games, 20 game winner, led the league in strikeouts. Great pitcher. He's going to be around a while. He's only 25, but a stupid guy. I do worry a little bit because our fans at the end of the game last night were saying, Channing, we want Strider. We want Strider. Well, be careful what you ask for because it is conceivable that Strider can step up tonight, pitch the game of his life, and get the Braves uh, back to Atlanta. Of course, Braves are going to have to do a little hitting for the uh, so-called Major League history's greatest offensive team. Only have one home run, two home runs. Uh, extra base hits, nada. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Think about it. The Phillies and Braves have played 27 innings so far in this playoff series. Phillies have dominated these guys 23 out of 27 innings. Uh, where have the Braves gone? Have they choked again? Can we use the word choke? Especially after tonight. Um, our pitching has just shut them down. And there's no way, no way you can't tell me that the Braves fans are as passionate about their team like our Phillies fans are. They just aren't. It's becoming widely known and proclaimed throughout baseball and throughout sports now that Citizens Bank Park is perhaps the best home field advantage, not only in baseball, but in any sport. And the record backs it up. Phillies playoff games since Citizens Bank Park has been around are 25 and 11 at the bank. The best record of any home team ever in the history of baseball. The best winning percentage at home. I feel privileged and honored to say I'm part of that crowd. I haven't been part of that crowd this year yet. Uh, the one game I had tickets to, to the uh, wild card series, they did have to play game three, which is fine with me. But did hit the lottery to get tickets to this series. Uh, if I had, I would be going tonight because I, I had game four in mind. This would be the clinching game. Uh, I'm hoping to get lucky in the next round if it, if we go that far. The Castellanos two home runs last night. 
man, I'd say after a bad year last year, he has really stepped up. Again, Mr. Clutch hitting the ball really, really well lately. Uh, everybody seemed to have a hit. Bryson Stott, Kyle Schwarber did not get hits, but they contributed in other ways. Uh, Aaron Noah, what can you say about him? He pitched a great game again, and he solidifies his case for getting a new contract and coming back to Philadelphia. Uh, just everybody just uh, ditched in, and it was a team effort, even though Grace Harper led the charge. And how about that staring down with Arcia of Atlanta? You know, after game two, and Harper made that mistake on the bases, that double play to end the game. Arcia, as a young punk, uh, says something in the dressing room that said, uh, attaboy, Harper, attaboy. Uh, you know, players sometimes are pretty stupid. Uh, you got to know, especially in these, this day and age, Everybody has cell phones. Everybody has the capability of uh, recording, uh, not only videos, but taping you on it. Somehow, some way, that stuff's going to get out. And they poked the bear. And they just agitated Harper. He had even more uh, incentive to wreck the Braves. And wreck he did. So going around the bases, he just stared down our seat. And if you watched it in the dugout, just standing there at the rail of the dugout, it seemed like he had his eyes fixed on Arsenia at shortstop the whole time. Just a spacey stare, spacey glaze. Um, talk about intimidating, you know. But Arsenia Ars is, he's a young player, but he's got to know better than that. Not to give fuel to the fire. The Braves had all the momentum coming into game three. They really did, even though the Phillies were coming home. The way the Braves took game two was, it was a real gut punch. But what happened in that clubhouse, mocking one of the greatest players in baseball, Bryce Harper, just turned the momentum around. And, uh, Maybe one of the keys to the series. Yeah. Uh, tonight. So we got Spencer Strider, great pitcher. Will strike out a lot. The guys, I'm sure the Braves are going to try to get him as many innings as possible. Strider will usually go six or seven innings. He'll rarely go longer than that. So he's got to make him work. A lot of deep outs, get to the Atlanta bullpen, just like yesterday. The thing the Phillies did last night, my friends, which they didn't do in game two, is they added on. They scored those six runs in the third inning, but then they kept scoring and scoring and scoring. They had 10 runs. They didn't give the Braves any hope. And that's what it's all about. You let the Braves win tonight, you give them hope because the series goes back to Atlanta on Saturday night. You don't want to give them any hope. You want to end it tonight. Ranger Suarez pitches. It would seem like a mismatch on paper between Strider and Suarez, but Ranger's been pitching good ball. He held Atlanta in check. In game one down in Atlanta. And uh, I would expect Topper to do the same thing as he did down there. Ride Ranger for four or five innings. If uh, there's any hit that the Braves are making an uprising, you go to the bullpen and you piece it together and you get, get you to the end. Um, but I have faith in Ranger. I think he's going to go out there tonight and pitch a good game. I think the key for the Phillies, again, is getting ahead and staying aggressive. All this series, the Phillies have been stealing bases and stealing bases, taking uh, taking the extra base, being aggressive, putting the heat on Atlanta. The, the pressure is on Atlanta. 
their backs are up against the wall tonight. You gotta keep, don't, do not take your foot off the gas against these guys. I think that game two crushing defeat was a wake up call for the Phillies. Wake up to the fact that you don't want to take your get foot off the gas with these guys. You want to keep the pressure on them right to the very end. And I think that's what the Phillies are going to do. Uh, at the end of the rainbow, if the Phillies win tonight or win the series, whatever, Saturday, we're going to face the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, in shocking fashion, swept the Los Angeles Dodgers. And you know, the Dodgers, even though they won 100 games this year, they won another National League Western division. They they weren't the Dodgers of old. They didn't seem like they were very intimidating. They didn't have the same pitching. Uh, they were riding a lot of kids. And uh, it in the playoffs, Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman did show up. Diamondbacks took it to him, scored off the dude early. Dodgers just could not deal with it. So they're gone. They are gone. So we got this young, exciting D back team to face. If it gets that far, and we'll talk about that down the road, I would expect the Phillies to be favored. Phillies have had trouble with the snakes in the past, but we'll, we'll talk about that when the time comes. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Tonight's the game. All the other series have wrapped up. Uh, this is the only baseball left over. That's why the game went from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. It's going head-to-head -head with NFL football tonight. Chiefs and the Broncos. So, my friends, all I can say is good luck to the Phillies tonight. Close it out. Don't give them any hope. Uh, beat the Braves. Make it a point to beat on Spencer Strider once and for all. And celebrate in front of your fans. The other advantage of winning tonight is you can then set up your pitching rotation for Wheeler, Wheeler and Nola to pitch games one and two of the National League Championship Series. I'm sure the D-backs will counter with Zach Galen, who's very good, and Burrell Kelly. So winning tonight lets us set up uh, Zach Wheeler for game one next week in Philadelphia. By the way, Phillies get by the Braves. They will have the home field advantage, not only against the Diamondbacks, but because the Phillies won the last game of the year and Houston did, did, did not, they would have the advantage over Houston and Texas in the World Series, too. How do you like that? It's a pen, potentially four games in the NLCS, four games at home in the World Series. Good times on the horizon. So thank you for watching me, listening to me, and hopefully we'll be celebrating it again tomorrow. And we'll be looking on the Plato Snakes. Everybody have fun tonight. Go Phillies. Get out to the lead early, just like you did last night. And celebrate, because these are the times to savor, my friends. Look how bad the Phillies have been for so long. This, now this is our time to be on top. Braves, Dodgers, Orioles. Win 100 games. Not going to mean a thing. No reason to change the playoff, playoff format. If you're good enough, you will get there. All these other teams, oh, it should be a semi-game playoff. Oh, there shouldn't be as much time in between winning the division and playing the Excuses, 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 
excuses. If you were good enough, you would be where the Phillies are right now. That's all I'm saying. Guys, have a great day. Take care for now. Thanks for listening and watching. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Phillies.